Hello YouTubers, welcome back to Yorkshire Media. I am Mark, your host, your presenter, whatever you want me to be. And yes, I am cheaper and better than the BBC. So what are we talking about? Well, I'm talking about Graham Young, aka the teacup poisoner. And um, that's what I'll be talking about today. Give me some fascinating things <laughs> about him. So, Graham Frederick Young, seventh, he was born 7th of September 1947. Died 1st of August 1990, best known as the Teacup Poisoner and later the St Albans Poisoner was an English serial killer who used poisons to kill his victims. Great, yeah, so we know about that. He was active from 1962 to 1971. Right, obsessed with poison from, a, from an early age. Young began poisoning relatives and school friends by lacing their food and drink with thallium and autonomy. He was caught when his school teacher became concerned about by his interest in poisons and contracted and contacted the police in nineteen sixty two. At the age of fourteen, Young was charged with administering poison to his father, sister and school friend and detained at Broadmoor Hospital. Young would later claim responsibility for death of his stepmother, although he was never charged with this crime. There were proceedings due stipulated that Young should be never charged with his crime. The proceeding judge stipulated that Young should not be released without <coughs> <coughs> Home Secretary's approval. Uh, approval authorization for 15 years. In 1970, Young was deemed rehabilitated and released from Broadmoor. He found a job as a storekeeper in a factory in Bovingdon, Hertfordshire, where his duties included making tea for his colleagues. Soon afterwards, Young began poisoning his workmates resulting in two fatalities and several others left critically ill. The deaths were initially attributed to, 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 to a mysterious bug, but young odd behaviour and his penchant for showing his considerable knowledge of poisons aroused suspicions. He was arrested. Large quantities of poison were found in his bed set with a diary detailing his poisonings in 1972 he was convicted on two accounts of murder and two accounts of attempted murder and sentenced to life in prison he said most of his sentence at HM prison Parkhurst where he died of heart attack in 1990 so there you go so so he died in 1990 young Young case made headlines in Britain and led to a public debate over the release of mentally ill offenders. Within hours of his conviction, the British government announced two inquiries into issues it raised. The Butler Committee led to widespread reforms in mental health service. The outcry over the ease with which Young was able to obtain deadly poisons led to Passage of the 1972 Poisons Act, Young Life Story inspired the 1995 film The Young, the Young Poisoner's Handbook. Early Life and Crimes. So that's his early. So, so this is his early life and crimes. Young was born in Nasdeen in Middlesex on 7th of September 1947 to, a, to Frederick and Molly. Young, he had an older sister, Winifred Molly, died tuberculosis, pleurisy, when Graham was 14 weeks old. He was sent by his father to live with an uncle and aunt, while his sister went to live with their grandparents. Several years later, Frederick Young remarried to another woman named Molly, and, and the family were reunited. He was fascinated from an early age by po po <laughs> poisons, and their effects he read extremely about Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany while <laughs> William Palmer and the victim uh, William Palmer 
the Victorian poisoner, also became an hero of Young's. In 1959, Young passed his 11 plus and went to grammar school. He also started to read books on advanced toxicology. In 1961, Young acquired an autonomy from local chemist and his knowledge of chemistry and poisons convinced the chemist that he was older than he appeared. He signed the poisons register in the name of Emmy Evans. He began poisoning his stepmother, father, sister. Beginning in February, Molly Young suffered vomiting, diarrhea, executed stomach pain, which she initially dismissed by bilious attacks before one his father was also suffering with similar stomach cramps and disabilitating him for days at a time. Young sister was violently ill on a couple of occasions that summer. Shortly afterwards, Young himself was violently sick at home. It even seemed as if the mystery bug had spread beyond their house. A couple of young school friends had also been off school ill a couple of times with similar painful symptoms. In November 1961, Winfred Young was served a cup of tea by her brother one morning, but found it taste sour. She took only a mouthful before throwing it away while on the train to work. An hour later, she began how we can, can it had to be helped out of the station was eventually taken to hospital where doctors came to the conclusion that she had somehow been exposed to poisonous tropi blender. Fred Young confronted his son but Graham blamed Winfred who, whom he claimed had been using the family's teacups to mix shampoo. Unconvinced, Fred searched Graham's room but found Nothing incriminating. Nevertheless, he warned his son to be more careful in future when messing about with those bloody chemicals. On Easter Saturday, 21st of April 1962, Molly Young died. Her death was attributed to prolapsed cervical disc, which was believed to have resulted from a rogue accident much later Young told police that, that he poisoned her with a lethal dose of thelium at her wake. Young poisoned a male relative after lacing a jar of mustard with pickles. So sh shortly afterwards, his father became seriously ill and was taken to hospital where he was told that he was suffering from an autonomy poisoning and one more dose would have killed him. Young and <coughs> oh, excuse me for that. Taken to hospital where he was told he was suffering from poison and more, one more dose would have killed Young's aunt, who knew his fascination with chemistry and poisons became suspicious, as did his, sci his science teacher, Mr. Hughes, who discovered several bottles of poison in Young's desk and spoke to the school's headmaster about his concerns. They arranged for Young to be interviewed by psychiatrist poisoning as a career advisor who contacted the police after Young revealed his extensive knowledge of poisons and toxicology. Young was arrested on 23rd of May 1962 after returning home from school vials of William and autonomy were found in his possession when questioned by police. He confessed to poisoning his father, stepmother, sister and school friend Chris Williams. Psychiatrist Dr Christopher Feich testified that Young had psychopathic disorder rather than a mental Ill illness and he failed to develop normal moral sense. He felt it was extremely likely that Young would be would reoffend and recounted a conversation in, in in which Jung said I am missing my anatomy, I miss the power it gives me. Heights recommended Jung to be de detained at Broadmoor Hospital 
institution for patients with mental disorders who have committed offences. Dr Donald Blair, another psychiatrist, concurred with Hyde's viewpoint. Young pleaded guilty to three charges of poisoning his father and Chris Williams and was convicted of malicious administration of not obnoxious thing to inflict grievously bodily harm. He was not charged for murdering his stepmother as a autopsy report did not list poison as the cause of death. The Judge Justice Melford Stevenson ruled that Young was to be detained under Section 60 of the Mental Health Act in Broadmoor Hospital. Furthermore, he, he was not being released for 15 years without approval of the Home Secretary. So there you go. That's how bad he was. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? And, and, and that investigation and wreck trial and prison. And, you know what I mean? He's mad at it. Well, that gives you all the gist. I mean, his later crimes. I'll just go through it very quickly. After his release from Broadmoor in February 1971, Young initially stayed with his sister Winifred and her husband in Amber Lampstead. Within weeks, he had resumed his interest in poisons and attempt to acquire poison from John Bell and Croydon in Wigmore Street was unsuccessful as, as the chemist refused to sell them without written authorisation. Young duly returned with required authorisation on Bedford College edited note paper was sold 25 grams of anatomy potassium tartrate he told the chemist that he needed for qualitative and qualitative analysis he later returned to the same chemist to purchase pallium poisoning yeah so so he poisoned Trevor, Trevor Sparks. Yeah, he, yeah, po poisoned like Trevor Sparks. I believe Bovington, the, the Bovington bug, and that. So it, it's all here. I, I mean, I'm not going to go into great detail, but it's all there, and it's disgusting. You know what I mean? Very, very nasty piece of work in, in my in mind. So that's Graham Young, the teacup poisoner. So there you go, it's shorter than usual, I know that, but there you go, if you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, please like the video, please subscribe if you're new, hit the bell icon, hit all that will let you know when I'm putting up another video, please share the video to your friends and your family, and to all the social media, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch and Bing, and also use the comment section, and I'll catch you on the next one, bye, for now, catch you all later, bye.